uh, Appendix 23E here on page A-171. If uh, you prefer, again, you can see it's enthalpy on the y-axis, entropy on the x-axis, and uh, there's a family of curves here. You can see the pressures kind of go along uh, these lines. There's atmospheric, 20 PSIA, 30 PSIA. Then along these lines are either quality moisture, you know, 10% uh, moisture content, 15% moisture, and then it on the other side it goes to superheat. So, like I say, if you if you prefer this uh, graph, find you know my opinion is it's a little difficult to get real accurate numbers, so I'd rather use the tables. But again, if you if you're used to this and prefer it, by all means, it is kind of handy for constant entropy processes. You just kind of slide up and down a vertical line here, but again, if you're not familiar with this Muller diagram, my advice would be to focus on, on the steam tables. Okay. Any questions on the basics of the steam tables? We're going to do a workshop here in a slide or two just to really kind of cement some of these ideas, but any initial questions on the steam tables? And again, the MERM has a real good set, uh, like I mentioned in that forum post, if you prefer Keenan and Keys or ASME, just find something you're comfortable with. Okay. Oh, Brianna says, um, yeah, sure, Brianna, dry steam. simply means X so we have dry stream people usually refer to saturated vapor with no moisture it might be superheated but generally it's just dry saturated vapor steam sure glad to help That's a good question obviously in a power plant you want to work with dry steam in the turbines because of the the moisture will pit the turbine blades and wear them out quickly. Okay, good question. You know, it could be superheated as well, Brianna, uh, either greater than, quality greater than or equal to one. Generally, people usually refer to saturated vapor dry, but it could be superheated as well. Okay. Okay, linear interpolation, um, something just to be aware of from, from time to time, you, you know, an entry may not be exactly where you need it. you got to kind of get somewhere between two entries. Linear interpolation uh, is this method here. So uh, given the present, so you got a table with values x1, x2, x3, excuse me, x1, x2, uh, y1, y2, and you need some value y star at some intermediate value of x, x star. And so you can form this interpolation. Uh, some of you may remember this. You kind of just go... Um, y star minus y1, y2 minus y1, the ratio of each point. And you can solve that for y easily, that formula. Uh, we'll do a sample here um, coming up here in our workshop. Okay, good. Okay, uh, first uh Practice problem here. A device compresses one pound of uh, 30 degrees of saturated water to 1,000 psi. What is the final specific volume? Okay. So uh, going back to that appendix, uh, the compressed liquid tables at 1,000 psi and 300 degrees, we can get that specific volume of 0.01738. Now, that, this actually brings up a good point. Let's test that idea. Remember I said you can just probably simply use um, the saturated liquid, uh, the F liquid properties at the particular saturation temperature, and it's accurate enough. So let's try that real quick. Why don't we go into the steam tables, just go into the saturation tables of 300F. What do you get for the uh, specific volume? Why don't we just take a minute and try that? I'm going to go into my book here too. Yeah, have a look. See what you get. Just go to the saturation temperature. 300 degrees F and read uh, specific volume um, for liquid, V sub F. Let's see what we get here. Point 
0.01745. Okay, good. And that's that's accurate enough for, and you can see it's accurate out to about the fourth decimal place. That's certainly accurate enough. So, yeah, that rule uh, can save you a lot of time. Uh, usually no need to fumble through that compressed liquid table. Yeah, very good. Very good. Definitely a time saver. And accurate enough. 0.01738 versus 0.01745 was it's accurate enough. So, okay, good. Okay, let's see. Now, let's. Why don't we move into this steam table workshop I've prepared here? So let me switch to the ancillary slides. Okay, so here's what we here's what we'll do here. Um, and I find this works real good to get everybody kind of work together, ask questions, involve some interaction workshop. So what we'll do, we'll take uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. Let's try these six steam table exercises. And what we'll do, we'll go through them in class tonight, the solutions. And then I'll post these on Moodle. Uh, should be available tomorrow, the solutions on Moodle as well. So let's, uh, let's go through these six questions, and we'll turn everybody loose and... Uh, it, well, like I said, we'll interact, ask questions, work together. So let's look at the six questions. Number one, 